Thank you very much, Evelyn. Thank you very much, uh, Kage, for the invitation. Uh, hi, everybody. Please excuse me. I think it's been like about 15 years ago that I have done again a presentation when I was right across the screen over there in Geisenheim. So it's been a while. So please bear with me. Um, I've, uh, I'm on, on Crete right now as we talk. Let me show you my view on the side. I don't want to make you jealous, but so outside over there is the ocean, as you can see. Uh, and um, we have 18 degrees Celsius right now. So people, if you want to just like hop on the plane, come over here for the weekend for a week. Please do so. The city is all dressed up with uh, decoration, Christmas decorations and music. And of course, you can uh, help us uh, um, in a while, not now, but with the pruning. It's uh, a wine experience, of course, and uh, try the new vintages, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is actually really, really not ready yet, but they're almost ready. Let me start the presentation. Uh, Yeah. There it is. So, um, so yes, this is uh, this is actually all about uh, Crete. Né? Crete is a is a wine is a holiday destination, and uh, that's why I try to invite you and come over to Crete. Um, you can see some of the numbers over there on the screen, which is uh, uh, numbers from the past, about 4.5 uh, million visitors we had in 2019 was a great year. Uh, and those numbers, I must say that they are just the international arrivals uh, to the airport of Hanya and Heraklion, so flying directly from abroad, not considered uh, uh, the arrivals, uh, the people that they would stop first in Athens and then fly to Kenya, or if they take a, a ship and, uh, and come to Kenya. So those numbers are, are really big if you consider that we have just like about half a million people on the island, permanent residents. And 2019 was a great year for us. Everybody was happy. Uh, 11 years later, after a financial crisis started, we were like, finally, we're going to we're gonna, we, we went through that, we can see a better future. And of course, uh, COVID came 2020 uh, with just 1.1 million of visitors and affected uh, everyone, everyone on the island, but also, I mean, everyone else uh, outside in the world. Uh, first time we said, okay, at least this time, it was not just our mistake. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, 2009, uh, 2021 brought some smiles uh, back to our faces, where uh, we had about 2.9 million people coming uh, until this is a number until uh, October. And uh, it was just uh, four and a half months because actually the market was open from July, August, September, October, and a little bit of November. So everything was compact in four months. Um, with a lot of people on the island. Uh, there was a lot of people visiting uh, the wineries. People were actually really thirsty to um, go away, go for vacation and, and enjoy themselves. Uh, those numbers look good, but they were not, I must say that they were not always uh, as good for us as uh, um, winemakers and wineries of Greece. Uh, I can remember myself when I came back in, in uh, 2006, back from Geisenheim, where there was, uh, I was going to restaurants, I was going to uh, places and I couldn't find, maybe I could find in a wine list, maybe one or two wines from Crete. And um, when you would ask someone, what did you do on Crete? What did you see? They would talk about the sea, they would talk about the sun, they would talk about the food, the olive oil, but not about wine. And, um, or if they had an experience, sometimes it was also a bad one. Uh, when you would go to a local restaurant and tavern and then you would try some house wine that um, the owner made and uh, they got to, to taste the turbo wine. And uh, of course, this affected a lot of all the wineries and the sales. So in 2006, thank God, um, uh, a few winemakers sat down in Heraklion, our biggest wine region here in Crete, and uh, they decided we need to do something. 
And uh, in 2006, there was the uh, Heraklion First uh, Winemakers Association. And then in 2008, we had all four perfections of Greek, Hanya, Retino, Heraklion, Alice and Polos, that uh, Wines of Crete was created. And uh, it was created for um, a lot of reasons, but the two basic and main reasons were to promote uh, wines from Crete as a product. So we would go uh, abroad, we do um, wine exhibitions, um, we created a website, we created maps, and uh, uh, well, the second one is like also then we were trying to promote the wine tourism on Crete, which we we saw the results uh, already in a, a couple of years after uh, we created uh, this winemaker association. More and more people uh, started coming to the island. And I mean, right now, I believe that a big percentage of the people that are arriving on the island, they're going to do one day um, a wine tour. They're going to go for a wine tasting. Um, it's not uh, it's not going to be, most of it, they're going to come like to relax and have fun, go to the beach. But one day, it's going to be go to a winery, try some wine, do a wine tour. And there have been um, a lot of actually groups of people coming just uh, for the wine itself, where they would go and hop from winery to winery and try wine and talk to the winemakers. We had a few um, groups this year, which this is for us a big success. Um, because although Crete has that long of history, 4,000 years, uh, people didn't uh, know or don't know our wines yet. Uh, but these changes um, due to this collaboration, due to wines of Crete, and of course, the work that every single winery does. We have 33 wineries, as Nikos Miyaragis mentioned yesterday. And uh, as he also said, uh, by 2022, we're going to grow, we're going to be 36. And um, this is make us very happy because uh, it, we understand that people uh, understand the value of this association. Why should we stick together and create this cluster and promote wines of free? Of course, the main core are all these wineries, but on the periphery, we have uh, a lot of other different small businesses that they we work together, like cheesemakers, bakeries, uh, hotels, restaurants, um, that they all have something to gain uh, when we create an experience for the people coming uh, to the island. Uh, because if you just want to have all-inclusive hotels where people just fly and stay there six, seven days per week, you don't have to fly to Crete. You can fly wherever, somewhere else in the world where it's going to be cheaper, um maybe different food we need to create something for Crete. they understand the hotels and the restaurants and all the people that we need to create an identity why people come to Crete, not just for the sea and the sun but for identity for uh, the wine for the history for uh sightseeing for all these things and uh in the beginning in 2006 uh, not a lot of wineries were uh, working with tourism, but uh, since 2010 and by watching other wineries, what they do and what they gain out of it, more and more wineries started creating a small area into the winery where they could do wine tasting. And um, in the beginning, there was just the winemaker or the wine owner. Most of the times, this is one thing. So the winemaker is the wine owner and the wine salesperson and the viticulturist. So all at one. And um, we had, um, they created those small areas where they had the right classes, the fridge, the wines, and they uh, would accept people uh, to show uh, the wines. And this is, this is amazing. Right now, I think 100% all of the wineries, they, they do uh, wine tasting and tours. Uh, so here uh, we can see uh, uh, wine subcrete. Uh, you can, uh, if you, someone comes in, in wine subcrete, you can find all these uh, different um, maps uh, with the routes. Um, I'm going to try to show you uh, exactly um, the web page. Uh, it's right here. Uh, so. 
here you can see, um, of course, uh, also the landscape in the it's in on the beginning of the uh, of the of the website as uh, uh, Tafel uh, talked about before. It's the landscaping. You can see here and here the vineyards, and uh, here uh, lower you can see some uh, about the history. We talked about the history, and uh, of course. Uh, on the bottom, it's different grape varieties that they exist just here on Crete. Uh, Romeco, Pinto, Moscato Spinas, Madillari. And of course, here uh, you can find those uh, daily routes where somebody could visit and um, visit different wineries, but also here, uh, Deminon wine press in Lati Petro, uh, traditional village, uh, and different other things that people uh, could, um, could do. Uh, so this is this has been a very helpful tool for us. Of course, social media uh, as complete as uh, Wine to Crete. Uh, we've been we've been doing a lot about it because, uh, as previous uh, speakers, they talked about the social media and how important they are uh, in order to have a direct contact um, with the people that they would like to visit and or they are on the island. What also helps, I must say, is that. Um, a few years ago, uh, it's not been a while, I cannot remember, I think two, three years ago, it opened up the uh, mobile um, system, like the different um, Vodafone, uh, Cosmote, all these different providers of mobiles uh, in Europe, it opened. So when I am in, uh, in Germany or if I'm in Spain, I can still use my own phone uh, with my data, with my free data that I have. So I can go online and search while I'm on the road and I can see what I can do on the area. And this was very, very uh, helpful uh, in my opinion, because otherwise then most of the people, they would need to uh, log into, a, they would have a smartphone, but they had to log into a Wi-Fi in order to uh, see uh, online, see their mails or where they're going or what they're gonna do. So uh, a little bit more about uh, now about our winery. Um, at Durax Winery, we, my father, uh, he started the winery uh, in, uh, he studied uh, first in Germany, uh, in, in Weinberg in 1970s. And uh, he got to work there. Uh, he also got to experience um, how people were talking about wine, the passion about the wines. You got to see how a lot of the wineries they uh, used to have, or they still have a Strauss Wirtschaft or a Basin Wirtschaft uh, for those that they're not from Germany. Yeah. And please correct me if I'm mistaken. It was a way, uh, and still is a way for the wineries to open a few weeks per year in order to uh, serve their wines and some cold dishes. And so people can come and try the wine and buy the wine, which is uh, very important. So when he when he moved back to to Crete, where he grew up, he uh, built up a winery straight from the beginning um, in let's say in a, in a, in this kind of a model. So where you had on the lower area you have your production, on the top part you have an area where you do the wine tasting or you offer food. Uh, and of course, some vineyards around the wineries uh, could people uh, see and, and and try the grapes or see the process that's going right now at the, at the moment. So it was one of the of the, of the first wineries that was uh, designed for that. Uh, the wine tastings um, were, um, like, as I told you, it, it was a thing from the beginning. It was not that organized. We made, my father made the winery, but he hasn't really um, put it, everything all together. When somebody was coming, he was uh, giving him to try some wine. As I told you, the winemaker is the wine, or is the owner, is the viticulture, is everything. And uh, a few years ago, I think even since I was in Geisenheim, people were talking about, were starting talking about sustainable and sustainability for every kind of, uh, of uh, business. Um, and the last, I must say the last three or four years, at least for me, it was, was more and more uh, being talked about and how important it is. And it, it was really difficult to understand what, what it is it. Uh, but then when you sit down and you start thinking about it, a lot of these uh, things 
uh, actually what we do. And most of the small businesses actually, I, I want to think they do follow. So uh, our aim, our goal was to become more sustainable, both in the wine production, but also as a, a wine experience. Uh, and what could it be more sustainable actually than um, drinking and eating food? Um, wine tasting is a gastronomic experience. You use all your senses. And I cannot imagine myself flying back to uh, Germany, Rheingau, Mosel, um, try some wine, try some Riesling, go to a winery, and they will offer uh, sashimi or sushi with a wine. Or go to go to a place where it's like such a good food that is there on the region, um, local, what people eat and combine it with a local wine. This is what I, I, I at least I have the feeling all oh, it's about a wine experience at a winery. Just try the wine, but uh, try the food as well that it, it is there. And a lot of times the wine is made for that food there um, through the years without not people understanding that, but this is what actually is uh, happening. So, and then this is also what I, what I was talking about. It was like the wine production and the wine experience. Um, you need a lot of the things actually we've been we've been doing without not knowing. For example, the people, uh, the people that we we have at our winery are from around the region. They stay there. Um, uh, they have their houses there. So this helps the the economy because of course they're gonna uh, buy things. They're gonna spend their money uh, in the area. And um, of course, and makes them uh, if they have a, the right, if they have a job, they're gonna stay there. They're not gonna uh, go away. They're not gonna go to the city or uh, um, abroad. The problem sometimes is I wrote it also. There is not enough people most of the times. Um, we already let's say we are a little bit late for that. A lot of people already left, and uh, sometimes they're not trained. So we have to train them. Uh, a lot about every single thing about the, how to um, talk to the people, uh, what to say about the wines, um, uh, even at um, the viticulture area, uh, how to work with the vines. And especially that's a problem uh, because we face a very um, seasonal uh, need for workers. We need a lot during the summer, but of course during the summer, there's a higher demand of people because there's a lot of hotels and restaurants that they work there. And uh, the last speaker was also very right to say that we need to be, uh, we need to take care of our people uh, and help them stay in the wine industry because we need people that they're passionate and they know what they're doing. This is very important. If you don't have the right team, you cannot go forward. So it's very, very important. So when people arrive at this other winery, um, as a small business, we do a tour um, at, at the facilities. We show them inside how you know, the wine is made. We talk about the history and, of course, um, the landscape where the where the vines are growing. And uh, after that, they can go upstairs where they can have a small wine tasting and they can order uh, some uh, food from uh, our restaurant. We have uh, been using a lot of, uh, uh, of course, what is what is more sustainable than, of course, having in, in your winery, on your winery, selling your wine, people will drink right there. And of course, in order to create all these dishes and all this food at the restaurant, we use uh, some organic olive oil that we're producing. And we have a big garden, uh, about 0 0.2 um, hectares, I, I can say that we are producing vegetables and uh, like tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, zucchini, some fruits like watermelons and uh, that we use at the restaurant. And of course, we always uh, make food and recipes that they are Cretan, Cretan recipes or at least Greek recipes, food that uh, fits very well with our, our wine. And uh, not to forget, like my father's big passion, passion is also having some uh, goats and sheep. So um, apart from having them to uh, cut the grass and eat the grass during the winter time and give us their uh, manure uh, for the vineyard, uh, they create some excellent uh, roasted 
lamb in the oven or toast with potatoes, which is also something that somebody can um, try uh, at the winery. And even then, if you don't have the product, you have so many small businesses around the winery that you can get all these products and um, you can get your cheese, you can get your uh, bread, and you have, of course, other people that they make some fantastic uh, olives. Uh, and uh, then you have hotels or people with Airbnb, uh, small houses that they rent uh, for vacation, and people can stay in the area and you not know, please, they can, they can be there and enjoy their time. So what else is also very important, because I mean, this is just part of it, is also uh, the energy that we use, not just for the wine tasting, for the fridge, for the most of the time for the fridges, but also for uh, to cook. Uh, since uh, 2019, uh, we got to invest in some uh, solar energy. We created a very small solar park on top of the winery. And so we're producing about 60% um, of the energy that we use uh, through the year uh, for the wine production and for the wine tasting. Uh, of course, this is also what um, I must say, it was also subsidized from uh, EU and, and Greece, uh, about uh, 40%. So this is uh, some subsidies that they still run in Greece for a couple more years and wineries, especially for wineries, where people can, where, where wineries can get uh, some help for equipment uh, to build their uh, wine tasting rooms, um, energy, green energy, and, um, this I think this helped a lot, a lot, a lot of the wineries. And our goal a few a uh, few weeks ago, one couple of months ago, I must say, they allow actually uh, the Greek government allowed for a company to get to until one hundred percent of their of their needs in energy they can produce. So our goal is in two thousand and twenty four to reach that uh, one hundred percent. And uh, what's What's very important is that uh, when we talk about tourism, uh, I've heard um, uh, the first speaker today that you said that in the end, he said that uh, some things are out of our hands and it's, for example, the transportation. So as I was Google and searching and what can I talk about today, I, I came up with this in Wikipedia where they said, without travel, there is no tourism. So the concept of sustainable tourism is a tightly uh, linked to a concept of sustainable mobility. 72% of tourism CO2 emissions come from transportation, 24% from accommodations, and 4% from local activities. So whatever we do here, it's about the 4%. And uh, it's not, it doesn't sound big, but it's a number and uh, Every single uh, business, small business, can do little by little, step by step, in order to fix up four percent. And uh, I think it is possible, especially for the wine tourism. It is possible. There's a lot of things uh, we can do uh, in order to uh, make our wine experiences very sustainable. Uh, but then, seventy-two percent is a big, 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 big number. Um, we, as a winery, we started by with a small step, which is just one car. It's fully electric, and uh, we hope we hope that the next years it's going to be the prices. Of course, are going to drop uh, for um, bigger cars, transportation cars to deliver our wines in the city uh, and in the area around. Uh, maybe also, I've read a little bit about um, electric. Uh, powered um, equipment for the vineyard, um, but we, we have to we have to think more than just those things. Uh, so we've been we've been trying to to think what can we do more as a winery to be more uh, sustainable. Uh, so things like, for example, uh, reuse of the packaging of the bottles, clean them and reuse them. Um, it's, it's difficult, we've been doing a few years, but it's very difficult because uh, there are other laws that not allow it, but also there is a problem, you have to be 100%, you have to find the whole process until you can wash your bottle 
and get it 100% clean and clear so you can use it. Um, so we have stopped uh, doing that, but we are still thinking about it or maybe get like the bottles. The idea is, is, is a lot, but uh, we need to see step by step, little by little, because we are a small business. And most of the wineries here on Crete are little businesses producing from 30 uh, to 250,000 bottles. It's the majority, of course, there are bigger uh, wineries as well. Water consumption outside in the vineyard. Uh, on the picture above, you can see uh, some tanks that we brought uh, to the vineyard in order to collect some uh, water from rainwater um, and use it to irrigate uh, the vineyards. It's not a lot, it's just uh, 60,000 liters, uh, and it's, it's not a lot, it's not enough, but it is something. On the bottom uh, uh, right picture, you can see uh, over there we dry out whatever remains from the press, all the um, skins and the seeds. We let them dry out uh, for a few days until they're completely dry, and then we pack them in, in, and store them. And later on, we can feed the animals, like the goats and the sheep, with that. Um, and of course, uh, on the other picture, you can see uh, our sheep that they are eating the grass uh, at the vineyard, leaving us uh, with uh, some manure, which uh, helps uh, to fertilize the vineyard. And in the end, I have a really small video. very much for your attention. I don't know if there are any questions. Yeah, thank you, uh, Adonis, for uh, this uh, talk and uh, very interesting also approach in terms of environmental sustainability in, uh, in the field of uh, wine tourism. I think this will be a big future challenges challenge of uh, of the field of the sector because traveling and sustainability it's uh, yeah, i think um i don't know if there are any questions in the in the audience are there any questions no i think but uh, i'm sure everybody enjoyed uh, the video you um, saw, but um, Angus has a question from the chat room. Yeah, um, hello Adonis, we've got a couple of questions in the chat. Um, the first one is um, in regards to the um, map of Crete and the event flyers. Um, 
have they been shared with bigger touristic companies um, to give people whenever they visit Crete and in hotels to push the wine tourism? So uh, we started we started with the maps. Uh, I must tell you that it didn't really work. Uh, it worked in order to make people aware, the locals, um, and tell them that we exist, that we're here and we're open and we offer wine tastings and uh, people can come and visit the wine. But at the hotels, it didn't really work because the system here is a lot about tour operators and people that they grab those people that they come uh, and they put them on the bus and sell their own tours and um, excursions to the wineries. So in the beginning, this was all of course back in 2006, 8, 2010, where well, the social media were not that a big thing. Uh, I, I don't think it worked a lot. Uh, and especially because we didn't have uh, uh, as an association, we didn't have also the, the personnel in order to keep up and go and see, okay, in this hotel, they're missing, the maps are missing, let's add some more and uh, uh, keep up with that. The good thing is though, social media came. So we are not really uh, focusing anymore on any kind of uh, material, paper material. We are focusing more on the social media and internet because like this you get directly from to the sea party to the person that they're here and you skip all the rest of the people that are in between we've seen that also this year and last year where the 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 pattern of people that they arrived on the island they were completely different so we didn't see any buses we didn't have excursions with 50 people uh arriving at the wineries we just had people that they would rent their own cars and they would drive from um, winery to winery or doing their own thing. And um, in order to get to them, you have to, you, you can get them only through the internet. Or if someone from the locals, from the people that are behind the reception, uh, from the wait staff, uh, from the service, or a taxi driver would talk about us and we say, oh, you, you, you're on Crete and you haven't been to a winery before, you have to go to a winery, you have to visit there. There's Durakis, there's Miyarakis, there's Karavitaikis, Manusakis, there's so great wineries, you have to go. If someone doesn't give that information, um, like somehow they need to get that. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question um, is about the solar, uh, the solar panel system, um, the use of green energy. Um, in the winery uh, where you installed the solar panels, um, is it enough to support the energy requirements of the wine production or just uh, the regular um, needs? So it's, it's getting better and better every year. So uh, the guy that I talked to when he planted them, he said, like a few years ago, if you actually wanted to, to produce the same energy that you're producing right now, you should have like three times the space that you have. Uh, the energy goes fast and fast and fast. And every time you use smaller panels to create more energy. We are about 60% when we place them uh, because it was a program that it was running, um, not the investing program, but the state itself said, you as a business, you can, you can do, they call it, I don't know if it's like a common term, but it's called net metering. So you can have, you can produce your own energy, but you go up until 60% of um, your consumption in total every year. Uh, and this is what I said before, it changed, uh, I think a month ago uh, to 100%. So every business, so far just the business is not private people, uh, but every business can um, actually put a solar panel on the roof or wherever they have space and producing the energy that they want until 100%. And how it works, it is like, it is connected with the system. We don't have any batteries, but it goes directly, the energy that's being produced, it goes directly to what we need. And if it's more, it goes into the system. And if we uh, come to harvest where we have a big demand for energy, we pull energy from the system and by the end of the year or monthly, they control that and they see how much did you consume, okay? This is how you produce, this is how you consume. There you go, you, you're gonna buy uh, a few um, 
uh, kilobytes from us, or you don't pay anything this month, and next month, like they see how much you produce and how you consume, and you pay for the rest. Alrighty, thank you very much. Um, the last question we have is, um, it's got a comment and a question. Um, um, another interesting and attractive case and a great example of networking among many small businesses and local agents. The question is, um, what kind of tourists participate in these experiences? Uh, could you distinguish types and do you see an evolution? Um, in the experiences, uh, you mean by coming to the winery? Uh, I'm not sure. Yes. Yes. So um, I must say that creep because it's it's hard to put everyone into one pot who's coming for a wine tasting because um, we have a long season. It starts in April. It finishes in October. So um, depending on what time of the year is, different people are arriving. So for example, people with no children. They're going to come early in the springtime. Um, people with children that they're going to have um, some vacation, they're just going to come in some vacation. So every uh, month, every week, the people that are arriving on the island will change. By the end of the season in September, October, at least before COVID, it was uh, people of older generation uh, that they didn't want to have the heat of the summer, so they would come later in the season, or people that they would uh, be more adventurous and wanted to travel around, and they didn't want to have a lot of people of August and July. Um, so there is, it, is, it is a very mixed case of people arriving. And of course, we work a lot, not a lot, but a lot of the wine is worked a lot with excursions made by the tour operators, by the companies that they bring the people here. So maybe one winery is a stop of a, an excursion of like going like to 10 different places, going to see an olive oil meal, going to a gorge, eat somewhere, go to a winery, and go back to the hotel. All righty, thank you very much. Uh, I don't need, uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> you said you haven't done this uh, for uh, 10 years now or so. Uh, you give the impression you do this every day. <laughs> uh, thank you for your presentation.